Hi and welcome to another video in this series about uh, swimming pool water levelling automation using the ESP32. Um, and one of the challenges that we need to overcome is if we're going to do this, we need our ESP32 and the water detection circuit to have power. So I had an initial look about uh, maybe using like this rechargeable power USB brick, but this can really only drive the ESP32 for less than a day, so it's going to be too annoying to use. Also, my attention at the end of this anyway is that the SP32 is going to have some control over this solenoid valve to fill the pool, and that's going to be driven by this reticulation controller anyway. And that has a 24 volts AC power input. So I thought, well, why not we just get the power out of that? So I have actually already um, jury rigged onto the, the AC inputs from the power brick. Um, two additional wire outputs here. And I think we can do something here that will eventually make it so we can power the SP32 using this as the source. I'm going to take a look at the, um, the output from the power. So I'm going to just hook that up to the oscilloscope here. And you can see here we've got our 50 hertz frequency and we've got an 80 volts peak to peak. So we've really got to treat this thing with a little bit of respect. The thing is we want to rectify this so we're not dealing with AC anymore. So I've built this uh, kind of classic full bridge rectifier design. You can see the classic diamond shape of the diodes. We can put the AC in here, it doesn't matter which way we flip around the wires and then we'll have a positive output and a negative output. So now I've got that hooked up to the scope. Let's have a look and see what we get as our output there. And you can see we've got the rectified signal. So that's awesome. But there's a mean voltage of about 27 volts and 40 volts peak to peak. And you can imagine that that would absolutely blow the pants off this thing. So we've got to get that down to a manageable level. And a very common solution for stepping down voltages in the DC case is to use one of these little buck converters so nice thing about this is that that signal is going to come in and be um, hit that capacitor there and smoothed out and then through the rest of the, the buck converter circuit we can uh, set it down to the voltage that we want. Okay so if we take the negative output from this and we put that into the, the negative input of the buck converter we take the positive output of the uh, rectifier and we put that onto the positive input of the buck converter. Then we can take a look with our scope probe and see what we get on the output here. And I'm going to give it a turn on now. It was good to see nothing blew up. And looks like we've got about six volts and then we should be able to adjust this trim pot on the buck converter here and affect the voltage yeah you can see that i can move it so if i wanted five volts i could do that I've put a blink sketch on my ESP32 and I'm just going to fire it up with this uh, USB battery thing. So you can see the blink sketch works. So now it's time to test it with the power supply from the reticulation controller. Before we hook it up to the ESP32 it's always just a good idea to make sure that you really have got coming out what you expect. I've got, uh, hard to see there, but I've got five, five volts coming out of the buck converter. Turn it off. 
be super careful that I plug into the right pin on the ESP32 in both cases. So there's the ground, and this is the 5 volt input pin. So now if we turn on our reticulation controller, we'll either blow up our ESP32 or get our blink scratch. Cool. So for our pool water level management, we now got power for our ESP32 coming from the reticulation controller.